there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host of Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on my website under www.josiesartschool.com. I'd like to start with some words from the book The Right to Write by Julia Cameron. We put a lot of bunk around the notion of being a writer. We make a big deal out of putting words on paper instead of simply releasing them to the air. We have a mythology that tells us that writing is a torturous activity. Believing that, we don't even try it, or if we do, and if we find it unexpectedly easy, we stop, freeze up, and tell ourselves that whatever it is that we're doing, it can't be real writing. By real writing, I mean the kind we have all the mythology about. We meet in the kind that does not involve scenarios like the one I had last night. A dinner with my good friend Dory, watching two El Pastino on video afterward, kissing Dory goodbye when it was still mid-morning, and strolling into my study to write just a little while, while little dog Maxwell curls at my feet. There is something too casual, too effortless, too normal about this kind of writer's life. It too closely resembles everyone else's life, just with some writing sandwiched in. Why, if this is how a writer lives, lots of us could do it. If the suffering is actually optional, if writing needn't be an antisocial activity? What if there were no such thing as a writer? What if everyone simply wrote? What if there were no being a real writer to aspire to? What if writing were something simply about the act of writing? If we didn't have to worry about being published and being judged, how many more of us would write a novel just for the joy of making one? Why should we think of writing a novel as something we couldn't try? The way an amateur carpenter might build a simple bookcase or even a picnic table. What if we didn't have to be good at writing? What if we got to do it for sheer fun? What if writing were approached like whitewater rafting? Something to try just for the fact of having tried it for the spills and chills of having gone through the rapids of the creative process? What if we allowed ourselves to be amateurs? From the Latin word, verb amare, to love. If we could just get over the auditioning to be respected at this aspect, a great many people might love writing. Although our mythology seldom tells us this, it's fun. From the book, The Crossroads of Should and Must by L. Luna. Shoulds are put on you from the moment you are born. You have to grow up under someone else's wing. It's a natural, healthy process for parents to give shoulds and for children to receive them. Because you, the child, must learn how to navigate the world. In addition to what you receive from your parents, you inherit a worldview from the community, culture, and specific time in which you are born. As you grow up, you get to decide how you feel about that worldview. It's a natural process to become your own person, to find your own voice, convictions, and opinions, and to challenge and shed the shoulds that no longer serve your evolving beliefs. But sometimes, we linger in should a little longer than expected. sometimes a lot longer. And we might even find ourselves as adults still living in a world of shoulds from childhood that we have not consciously examined. Are you familiar with Gurdjieff? asked a friend. He was a spiritual teacher around the turn of the century. 
and one day he posed a question to his students. If a prisoner wants to escape from prison, what's the first thing he needs to know? You need to know the guard, one student said. You need to find the key, said another. No, Gertschef said. The first thing that you need to know if you want to escape from prison is that you are in prison. Until you know that, no escape is possible. If you want to live the fullness of your life, if you want to be free, you must understand first why you are not free. What keeps you from being free? The word prison comes from the Latin meaning to seize, grasp, capture. A prison doesn't have to be a physical place. It can be anything your mind creates. What has taken a hold of you? The natural process of socialization requires that the individual be influenced by shoulds in order to function and be a part of society. However, as you grow up, it is healthy to be self-aware about the shoulds you inherited. You might value and keep some shoulds, while others you might choose to discard. If you want to know must, get to know should. This is hard work. Really, really hard work. We unconsciously imprison ourselves to avoid our most primal fears. We choose should because choosing must is terrifying, incomprehensible. Our prison is constructed from a lifetime of shoulds. The world of choices we unwittingly agree to. The walls that alienate us from our truest, most authentic selves. Should is the doorkeeper to must. And just as you create your prison, you can set yourself free. From my book, Deepen the Way You Live Your Life. Choose to color your life with adventure. Maya Angelou said, Life is pure adventure. And the sooner we realize that, the quicker we'll be able to treat life as art. Think about the times in your life when you felt pure joy, when you woke up in the morning. Did you notice how you dressed? Did you sing more? What was the outlook on your circumstances? Is your life a piece of art? What parts of your life can you fill with more color, more substance? <music>